Would you like to improve your multifunction display charts from this to this? If so, then this is your how-to video to understand how you can take these free tools and unleash the power of your display on your boat. This is Advanced Fishing and Outdoor. Have you ever found a map or a satellite image or even a nice overhead picture from a drone and you wish you could create an overlay on your Lowrance or Simrad units? Well, it's possible with the free tool provided by Navico called Insight Map Creator. Now, lately it appears to be removed from the Navico Insight Store, so I'll provide a direct link in the description of this video where you can download it. But with Insight Map Creator, along with an open source tool called QGIS, you can create a custom overlay map that you can use while on the water to see exactly where you're at. As an example, I'm going to show you how to take a seafloor map that was published by several federal and state agencies and make this an overlay on your plotter. Now this is a powerful tool that can help you lock in with good accuracy of what the seafloor bottom is composed of so you can target specific species of fish. Rocky structure, rockfish, and lingcod, cobble, gravel, halibut, and, and, and so on. Now ideally your map will have some coordinate marks such as lat and longitude marks or even UTM, but something to provide precise location reference points. Now if not, there's another way to reference landmarks, but I'll save that for another video. But the first step is to get your map or picture to be cropped to the way you want it. Now in this example, in the North Newport, Oregon area, I, I don't want all the other stuff from this map, like the legend, to be cluttering my screen. So I'm going to crop that. Now I'm using a Mac, so if you're using Windows, you'll have to use a PDF viewer for this. I'm using the built-in preview tool on a Mac to accomplish this. Now you need to save this in TIFF format. And we do that to maintain the high resolution, and you want to select at least 300 dpi. Now QGIS is a geographic informational system software package that's open source, and it allows you to uh, connect map data and location data and integrate that into your maps. And you need that because your map right now is just a picture. So you have to be able to embed some coordinate information or location information so that it can accurately depict that on your chart plotter. Now once you open QGIS, select Project, New, and next under Project, select Properties, and you want to make sure that your CRS or your datum information is set to WGS 84 4326, and then select OK. Now on the main page, select Layer, Geo Referencer, and this is where we do all the work on selecting points on the map and entering a known coordinate. Now if you hover over each of the menu options in the georeferencer, it will come up with a description of what it is. In this case, we want to open up our raster image, uh, what we saved earlier, the, the image that we cropped, and this is the blue checker icon. Now you'll need to select the file type and set it to all supported types and navigate to the file you saved earlier when you crop the image. Now before we do anything else, we need to check a setting in here after you have your image imported. Click on the settings cog. Make sure your CRS is still set to WGS84. If not, change that now. Set resampling method to cubic. Deselect set target resolution. and then select OK. Now we have this image in the georeferencer. We need to add reference points and enter the coordinates. Now remember that the original chart from NOAA that I have is this example has the coordinate grid, so I'll be referencing that as I manually add the coordinates to each grid mark. Zooming in is a good idea. It will allow you to see the grid marks in the map better and you'll be able to select the intersection point with better accuracy. 
Now to add the reference points in the GeoReferencer, we need to click on the Add Point button. Now select a point on the map that you know the coordinates for. When you do that, a dialog box comes up asking for the coordinates. Now the NOAA map I have is in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And normally Q just wants everything in decimal format, which you can convert if you like. But you can enter degrees, minutes, and seconds by putting a space between each value and Q just will automatically convert that to decimal format. Now since I'm in the northwest, the latitude will be a negative number from the prime meridian and latitude will be positive since I'm north of the equator. Now you'll want to continue to create more reference points, also known as ground control points or GCPs, and that will provide better georeferencing. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead since this is a tedious and time-consuming task. I think eight reference points is a minimum, but again, more than that is better as you get better accuracy. Now if you zoom out, you'll see each of your control points in red, and now you're ready to start georeferencing or processing your image. Click on the Start Georeferencing button. This will take a little bit of time, and when it's complete, you'll see a message in the main project page will show this map as a layer. On the main canvas, you'll see your picture or map, and it's now georeferenced. As you pan your mouse cursor over the map, you'll see accurate coordinates of the location that you're pointing at. You can also add a Google Earth overlay as a point of reference, and that's out of scope for this video. Please post a question in the comments if you need some details on how to do this, but it gives you some context of where your image is. Okay, now is a good time to take a quick breath. You've done most of the work now but you'll want to save this image in a format that you can use for all sorts of mapping tools so you don't lose all the work you've done so far. Now I normally save this as a GeoTIFF file and that way I can import this file into Google Earth, uh, change formats for other tools with little effort since you've already done the work. So let's do that. Click on Layer, select Save As. The format should be GeoTIFF. If, if not, then you want to change that. And then give it a file name. And I'm going to call this one North Newport, since that's what I'm working on. Select OK. Cool, now you have a backup copy. Now the final work in QGIS is to get your map ready for Insight Map Creator. You need to convert this georeference map to the Keyhole Markup Language, or KML, format that Insight Map Creator wants. To do this, we need to convert the map layer. So under Raster, Conversion, then select Translate. Now a new dialog box should appear. Make sure your map layer is listed in the Input Layer field. If not, change that. That's just a pull-down option. The field converted, click on the box with the three dots to specify a file name. Now I like to put my specific map in a separate directory or folder and this will make it easier to copy all the files that get created and reference them easier with Insight Map Creator. Now back at the Translate window, click Run and this will run the conversion. At this point you're ready to process these files in Insight Map Creator. Now it's only supported in Windows so you'll have to use that as the platform. But go ahead and start Insight Map Creator. And first you need to reference your KML files you created in the last step with QGIS. Click on View, Processing Modes, Keyhole Mode Window. On the right, select Add Folders. Select the folder that has the main KML file that you produced in QGIS. Now in my example, it's North Newport KML. That's how I copied it over. Then select the Build button on the bottom. Now this will run fairly quickly. Now I want to add a useful point here. If you have more maps that you want to convert and have included on this specific SD card, then you'll want to add the folders here. Typically I create a separate folder for each map and add them here so that they're processed by this single instance. Next, you need to get your raster images ready. This is the final image files that you'll actually copy over to your SD card. 
click View, Processing Modes, Raster Mode Window. Now for your working directory, you want to create one that Insight Map Creator will place all the AT5 files that your display will need. Now I have one already called My HDS Map, but it's irrelevant. You can create whatever working directory that you want to put the final files in. Our minimum resolution should be set to 1, and most set it to be max at 16. This is where your overlay will appear when you zoom in or zoom out on your display. But typically people choose 8 or 16. Now select Add Folders. Now this is the folder where your main KML files are that you produced in QGIS. It's the same folder that you added earlier with the KML page. Now as I mentioned earlier, if you have more maps that you want to convert and have included on this SD card, then you'll want to add those folders here also. Typically I create a separate folder for each map and then add them here so that they're processed by this single instance. Next, we need to change a few options before we build. Click on Advanced Options and select Atlas version 13. Now some older displays may not support version 13. If you hover over the version, you'll see some descriptions of the differences, but basically newer versions gives you more features and overlay options. But not all units support the newer versions. So you may have to experiment a little bit on this depending on what display you have. But for HDS uh, Carbon and Live Units, version 13 is indeed supported. Next, under Advanced Options, Raster Options, select the fourth pull-down, and you'll need to select Shaded Relief Imagery. Now, press Build. This will take a while as it processes all your map images. Once this is complete in your working directory, you'll see a bunch of AT5 files. There's one for each zoom level for your display. Copy all these files onto an SD memory card for your display and put them in a directory called Shaded Relief, all one word. Make sure you properly eject the SD card so it does not get corrupted. Now you're ready to insert this card into your display. Insert your SD card into your display in a free slot. You should quickly see a message at the bottom of the screen that the chart is now loading. Now if the overlay is not showing, click on the chart, hit more options, select the chart source is Lorance. You will also need to select Chart Options and turn on Shaded Relief. Now as you zoom in, you'll be able to see your custom map or your custom overlay. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Please post a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and please subscribe to keep up to date on new tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching.